This is Charter Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in the San Gabriel Valley with Mike Spence. He is a member of the West Covina City Council, also a candidate now for the California State Assembly. We congratulate you on your entry into the race. Thank you. Tell us about the district. Uh, well, the district takes in actually uh, three counties, uh, part of Orange, uh, Yorba Linda, La Habra, Placentia Brea, and then it has Chino Hills and San Bernardino County, and then it has Roland Heights, Diamond Bar, Walnut, and part of West Covina. How LA interesting so that it counties. has, because I know under the redistricting commission, the hope was to keep communities of interest together, but this was a district just because of geography that you're pulling from a lot of different communities. Right, but you know, you know, to be fair though, there's people that live in Chino Hills that go to church in Diamond Bar, and they, you know, have, you know, so I mean, right. it, it is the, a, the three county similar, area yeah, is it's very similar to that area there. Who is the incumbent? Uh, the incumbent is Ling Ling Chang, and she's running for state senate. So this is now an open seat. Correct. I gotta ask why. Why have you decided to run for the California State Assembly? You've been well known as uh, someone behind the Republican Party. You have been a strategist, a staffer, worked for uh, Mr. Kurt, uh, Kurt Hagman in the Assembly, and now on the Board of Supervisors. You got a nice life. Why would you ruin it by going to Sacramento? Well, I don't know if working for uh, <laughs> I don't know if working for elected officials right, is a nice exactly. life. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, I think uh, there comes a time where uh, I. I feel that I can be valuable, right. and my voice is, uh, I think people are frustrated. I think I appeal to that. Right. I've been involved, you know, like you said, for right. over 20 years in Republican Party stuff. If there's been a fight, I've been in it. You have been I've in been it. I've been in it. <laughs> you and have. So, uh, you know, that's what we need. We need fighters in Sacramento. And let's talk about the jump from West Covina to Sacramento, which has been done. We know there's a current assembly member, Roger Hernandez, on the right. Democratic side, who right. went from West Covina to uh, now the California State Assembly. Give me a sense of what your experience on the city council does and how it informs your run and ultimately, should you be successful, your tenure in Sacramento. Well, you know, well, you know there are differences because one's a legislative body, right. and uh, the other one, you know, when you're, met, you're five people, you know, you're one right. of five, you have, right. you have much more power. Uh, in that sense. Right. Uh, but you know, I think the problems that you have in city government, you have in county government, you right. have in state government, and I think actually, and, and I was on a school board. Yes, you were, um, yes. I and so that. I think, you know, the, the breadth of experience that I have, I mean, I know too much about too many different things. <laughs> right. Um, you know, my sister says my head's full of useless information. <laughs> Me too. And so that, well, means I, that means I'm perfect for Sacramento. Right. <laughs> so uh, so let's talk about a potential uh, landing in Sacramento, if I may. Uh, it's likely that should you be successful, you'll be part of the minority party. Mm -hmm. California continues to be a blue state, at least as it relates to the state legislature. And so uh, how do you hope to have your voice heard if you are a member of the minority party? Uh, well, actually, what I've noticed is that uh, too many people that get elected in the, the minority party, right. they don't talk. Right. Uh, they just go and they go and they do their due diligence sure. as the opposition party. That's not what I do. Uh, I like, I, I, I'll be very vocal sure. uh, uh, when I can work with Democrats, I will, but that's not necessarily my, my goal. And actually, I think we're seeing that Democrats are being split on a lot of issues now with uh, SB you know, 350. Exactly, SB 350, and there's some crime stuff I think that's going to be coming Although that way. Although so. it does appear, and I don't want to be Pollyanna, I know I see one side of people as a journalist. But it does appear that in Sacramento, the Democrats and Republicans, they get along fairly well. Yeah. There is an attempt by the Democrats and Republicans to work together. I mean, we've been in Sacramento and I'll uh, see fundraisers going on and Democrats and Republicans are at each other's fundraisers. Right. You know, in Washington, D.C., I don't see that camaraderie that I do seem to see in Sacramento. So are you hoping to be part of those Friendships, those alliances where Democrats and Republicans work together and get along? Well, you know, uh, you know, Democrats are, are my opponents. All my enemies are in the Republican Party. <laughs> uh, Very well stated. So, uh, Very know, so well stated. I, I get along. Uh, I get along. You know, I don't take stuff personally. Right. And, uh, you know, I've been around a long time. I have thick skin. And, you know, I don't think other people should, too, as long as you keep it right. at a dignified level and talk about issues. I don't think it's, it's a problem. So what are your issues to the extent that you are going to Sacramento to have certain issues heard? What are those issues? Uh, well, I think that people are frustrated. They have to spend more time making money so they can feed government mm. and, and do all the different government things that uh, government thinks they need to spend money on. And they don't have time for their families, right. you know? And I think 
that we need a voice up there saying, look, we can't just keep taking money from people. We have to let them be free, let them make decisions. Right. We can't be a nanny state and like I, the Democratic Party is. And I want to And ask, I think it's something that, you know, I, right. I think I can articulate. I want to ask about that issue of taxing, because I do feel as if, as it relates to that issue, Democrats and Republicans do split. Recently, we were in a, or I guess we still are in a special session on transportation. And the Democrats weren't able to get any Republicans to support any type of tax uh, enhancement for a gas tax. And I was happy about that. Too many times they do get it. <laughs> but, fair enough. But one area where there does seem to be some agreement is on regulatory reform. Whereas, you know, maybe 10, 20 years ago, Democrats were not looking at regulatory reform. It does seem as if they're looking at it today. But there's a lot of talk about regulatory reform, and there seems to be regulatory reform at the margins, but not a real bona fide push, despite the fact Governor Brown says, you know, CEQA, reforming CEQA is the Lord's work. And uh, how can you be a voice for regulatory reform if you want to be a voice? Well, well, actually, you know, being free from regulations is something that's very important. But I think, I, uh, I think like with CEQA, part of the problem is because it's just done around the edges, mm -hmm. what happens is there's lobbyists just for that individual project that you know get involved. Right. And there's not really the focus on the big picture. And there needs to be a voice about saying, hey, look, this is just plain bad. We have to change it all, not just for this one project, right. not for, for that but one I project, feel as if but for everybody. I've been covering this issue for years. Yeah. And I keep thinking, this is the year, again, it's not my position, it's just my perception, that we're going to see real regulatory reform. The government, governor wants it, the Democrats want it, the Republicans want it, and yet... We, well, we came close in 1996 when Republicans, <laughs> 96. Were, when Republicans were in the majority in the state assembly. For about uh, three yeah, seconds. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, a year. Right. And, uh, you know, we came close, but the Democrats stopped it in the state Senate. But now, but here we are, though, and it does feel as if there is building consensus. Yeah. The problem is there's also a lot of people making a lot of money over regulations, mm -hmm. whether implementing it or getting around it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that infrastructure, I mean, that becomes a problem um, because you have a vested interest right. in keeping the system the way it is. So what about other issues? What other issues do you hope to bring to the fore should you be successful in your run for the assembly? Well, I think there are too many bills passed ah. that no one ever looks at. You've heard that, we've heard that. Uh, they don't see what happens. Got and I meant. think there needs to be accountability for the laws that have been passed. Um, you know, and actually, I don't think we need more laws. I'm one of those people. I'm gonna if I have a contest, it's gonna be uh, not you know create your own law. It's, It'll be get rid of one. It's interesting. You have to get rid of one. You'll often really see the fo photographs of uh, new legislators dropping their first bill, and yeah. sometimes I think, hmm. You know, is that really, do they need to drop a bill? I mean, is that necessarily what needs to happen? I know, look, there's a lot of issues that are drones and right. technology. There's a lot of stuff where we need to start right. looking at it. But, you know, are you hoping not to submit a bill? Your first uh, two No, years? I'll submit bills to repeal bills. To that repeal bills. <laughs> that are in the past. And I think, you know, there's, there's ways to draw attention to issues with bills. Uh, um, you know, but, you know, the reality is uh, we need less uh, bills right. uh, going through the legislature unless it's repealing something. So how, what does that look like? Uh, how do you about. get how do you get consensus on, on on I know look this is a hypothetical but yeah. is there one bill for example you're like if I can get up there and repeal this one bill I will have succeeded uh, well well I'll uh, well I view uh, success as doing what I'm supposed to do so I mean that's always been you know my approach to stuff right. so uh, I'll win more than people probably think I will because right. that's been my record on the city council and school board people go oh you'll never win on that and I end up winning a lot of stuff. Um, you know, but I think there's a lot of areas that need focus and they need a voice, and I think I can contribute. Well, we wish you the very best of luck Thank on you. your run for the California City Assembly. He is Mike Spence, currently a member of the West Covina City Council, running for which number district? 55. 55th Assembly District in California. My name is Brad Pomerantz in the San Gabriel Valley. This is Charter Local Edition.